Welcome back fellow aircraft builders and aviation enthusiasts. Uh, today's just a short little video on my 63,000s. This is a follow-up to laying out the parts video that I did. And so what I'm doing now is rough cutting all the parts out of the stock. And a long time ago I shot a video with the electric shears and I think I stated in that video that I was going to probably use that method to cut uh, most of the parts out of this thickness. What I've found is that it's great for cutting smaller parts if you're just trying to cut out of a corner of a sheet or something like that or you can see up there I've got some irregular cuts up there. It's really good for cutting bits and pieces out like that but when you've got these longer runs for say the fuselage um, top doubler or these two narrow doublers here for the uh, window sills or the door sills and then seat channels and the, um, you know things like that a lot of longer cuts and then curved cuts as well uh, that you can see here for the uh, side skin gussets these longer runs on these channels and everything else it's a little harder to use that tool even if you're using a cutting guide and because it causes a sacrificial coil of material to scroll away from you the thickness of it means you constantly have to pull it out of the way of the shears to keep the, the tool rolling. Now it cuts beautifully, but because you're getting that sharp coiled 63 thousandths thick uh, cutoff um, material that constantly has to be moved out of the way, it scrapes and drags and nicks the metal underneath. So I've tried a couple different methods today. One was to use my really, really old skill saw. I've had that since I was... I don't know, 16, 17 years old. <laughs> so it's been with me for quite a while. If you use a carbide tipped blade on it, you can cut through this material, but what I found is it's actually breaking the carbide tips off of it. So I either need a blade with a lot more teeth on it uh, or something that's a little more powerful and spins a little faster. What I've done instead is I'm taking my also fairly old Craftsman jigsaw here with a 20 teeth per inch bimetal cutting blade and just very slowly cutting these longer runs out and it seems to be working really well. You don't want to go too quickly with it simply because you end up building up material on the blade. You end up filling in the teeth with soft aluminum on the blade and it's kind of a pain in the neck to get those out of there. You have to use a, a sharp steel like knife blade or, some, or a razor blade or something to try to scrape those out. It's very difficult to do on those really fine te tooth blades. Furthermore, this method is fairly slow. It produces a decent cut, but it's fairly slow. So I'm gonna set up the camera and just kind of give you a quick idea of how slow you wanna go. If you try to push the saw through the material too much, you'll end up loading up the blade with a lot of material. It's best just to let the blade itself do most of the cutting and then you just kind of guide it where you need to go. So my plan after these are all cut is just simply to finish these off on the bandsaw. So these longer runs are kind of a pain in the neck and those will be difficult to clean up at some point. I'm maximizing material here, but it makes cutting these edges off a little bit harder to do when you've got very little edge material left after you do the rough cut. So I'll still probably do those in the bandsaw with the, the fence and just be real careful and then finish them up on the belt sander. But for these larger curved parts, this jigsaw is going to be the ticket. Now, uh, one thing I want to caution you about is the jigsaw cutting guide itself is made out of metal which means that it's going to scratch the heck out of the aluminum underneath so you want to take some painters tape or some duct tape or whatever else and uh, put that underneath now the only issue with that is that you will start gouging the tape because remember you're leaving cutting burrs all over the place when you're doing this so eventually this tape will wear down to the point where it's going to get sticky and uh, going to catch on things and stuff like that so you may have to do you know two or three runs of new tape on the bottom of the cutting guide to make it through an entire piece but I'm gonna have plenty of material left over which is outstanding even considering the extra parts that I've made and keep in mind the only pieces that I'm not doing in 63 thousandths are the seat pans which are relatively large pieces and the reason for that is that they come in the uh, finishing kit so even if I was to make all of the parts in the finishing kit that come with it and then buy every other part that's off the shelf like wheels and tires and brakes and things like that. If I was to buy all those pieces separately, it would actually cost more than the finishing kit and then I'd still have to fabricate the parts uh, in the plans. That's why I'm doing that. There's going to be only just a handful of parts that aren't going to be plans built that are included in the finishing kit. But anyway, that's my reasoning on that. So I'm going to set up the camera real quick and just so you can see how slow going it is with this jigsaw. If you've got a better idea, please post in the comments below. I'd love to see it. I'm going to finish this up and then get to work on uh, grinding and sanding these down to shape after that. But 
Uh, you know, you may have a better idea than I did on this one. It's just I've tried every other mechanism to cut these things, and this seems to be probably the best way for me with the tools that I have. So I'm going to go ahead and set this up and let the camera roll so you can see the actual, um, so you can see the actual progress. What I'm going to do is just set up the, the saw and go at a very nice and easy, comfortable speed so that we uh, see how it goes. Now please, if you do this with any kind of power tool, make sure that you wear ear and eye protection. This is very, very loud and will damage your hearing. So here we go. I sped this up so that you didn't have to watch four full minutes of me cutting and because it's also very loud, so I wanted to spare your ears. But the jigsaw does a pretty good job here of cutting through this material. It just takes some time and it's a little tedious. But uh, if you've got a suggestion for other builders on a better method to use here, I'm all ears and I'd love to see you post a comment below with a better method. By the time this video goes live, I will have already fabricated all these parts. so. It won't help me uh, for this airplane, but it might for future builds. Uh, all told, I have about four and a half hours into cutting, rough cutting these parts out and getting them ready for finish cutting and then sanding. How tedious is that? <laughs> so this is actually two doublers and they go into the cabin sides at the uh, door sills. I've just got to cut them down the center, but because they're so narrow, I can do that on the bandsaw. And I was talking about the cutting guide and using, um, you know, tape and things like that. I actually have a little bit of a surface scratch in here. It's very gentle, and I can buff that out without any problem. Probably don't even need to. I can't even catch my thumbnail on it. But, you know, there's a little bit of grit and material that gets caught in that, in that tape and will, you know, scribe the surface if you're not careful. So... Again, not too worried about it. I can I can buff that out without much problem if I even bother to. But that's how slow it, it is cutting out this larger stuff. Now I contemplated doing it on the table saw. I contemplated doing more of it on the bandsaw. And the problem is just maneuvering a sheet this large for a bandsaw and even the table saw. And then again, you run into your cutting platform. If you don't block it up with wood or whatever, you know you scratch the heck out of it. So. This, you know, using these power saws throws material everywhere, much like the router does when you're cutting out ribs. But pick a day where you're not going to annoy your neighbors and maybe when the wife is gone <laughs> and knock it all out in one big session and then you're not upsetting anybody. But there's, there's aluminum shavings and bits everywhere uh, right now. So all the way across the garage stall where my wife parks and everything else. So at any rate, I'm going to go ahead and get cutting the rest of this stuff out so I can get to finish work. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you've got any comments, concerns, or questions. And feel free to leave a cutting tip in the comments below if uh, you've got a better idea. Thanks for watching. That's all for this video. Be sure to like, comment, or subscribe. And let me know if you have any requests for future video content. As always, thanks for watching and good luck with your projects.